joining us from and joining us from. Uh, I'm very happy um, this evening to welcome you all to our uh, special session on um, graduate degree programs in the United States, specifically on the uh, LLM program. And we have a special guest, uh, Samuja Kugel, who will be um, representing the University of California, Davis. Um, and she'll share with us information about the LLM program uh, at UC Davis. Um, before that, she will also um, provide us uh, some overview uh, about um, uh, optional practical training and curricular practical training for graduate programs in general. Um, uh, but before we hand over um, the mic to uh, Samudra, I would like to introduce my colleague Marwa, who will um, provide you some information about Education USA and general uh, information about graduate uh, admissions uh, for those of you who are joining us for the first time. So thank you again so much for joining us, everyone. Marwa? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much, Sana. Uh, welcome everybody to today's session um, with us. Um, of course, we have our special guest speaker, as I have mentioned. Again, my name is Marwa Shille, and I am the Education ESA Advising Assistant for the West Bank. And um, uh, before I hand it over to our guest speaker, I would like to give you just a brief overview about Education USA um, and the five steps to US study, and also um, some information about graduate study in the US. So the Education USA basically um, is a US Department of State network work of over 430 advising centers in 175 countries and territories around the world. And our advising center um, offers a wide range of um, services. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So we conduct in-center activities, you know, for students, um, parents, uh, and counselors who are interested in learning more about uh, studying in the U.S. We have uh, general public sessions, you know, specific topic sessions, and individual consultations, of course, for different um, levels of study, like undergraduate or graduate degree. Um, you also have our outreach sessions where we visit um, local high schools and universities and meet um, students who are uh, eager to learn more about the U.S. higher education system and the application process. And so um, you also welcome, you know, the U.S. higher education institution representatives to our country, and they have their own information sessions with these students, and they have, you know, college and university fairs, um, and they also visit, you know, high schools and uh, universities. Um, we have been offering, you know, more and more of our services virtually because of the global pandemic. And we are connecting with so many people, you know, throughout our virtual sessions um, and events. Um, uh, if we can go to the next slide. Uh, so if you are not from the West Bank and you would like to uh, know more about uh, the services that is offered by the Education USA Center in your city or in your country, uh, check out the Education USA website, educationusa.state.gov, uh, where you can find you know, the nearest advising center to you. Um, also on the Education USA website, you can research um, um, different financial aid and special aid opportunities where you know a number of colleges and universities in the US share their information on that website. And of course, you can learn more about the Asher education system and the five steps um, to your study. So the five steps to your study, as you can see here from the screen, the first step is to research your options. Um, there are more than 4,000 accredited U.S. higher education institutions, and so they offer different, you know, academic programs and different degree programs, uh, social environments, and different opportunities to international students. And you need to carefully um, explore your options before you choose the best fit universities and colleges. After you research your options, the second step is to finance your study. Um, you need to understand uh, how much it will cost you to attend a certain university in the U.S. And if there are any um, uh, scholarship or financial aid opportunities uh, at that specific institution. The third step is to complete your application. You need to understand uh, the different application requirements and you need to prepare yourself also for the application requirements. So, um, and basically the process of applying to US universities and colleges is sometimes time consuming. And so you need to prepare yourself ahead of time. Um, the fourth step is to apply for a student visa. After you receive admission from a university and you accept uh, the offer, you need to apply for a student visa so you can um, travel to the United States. Uh, the fifth and final step is to prepare for your departure. 
And of course, you need to make your travel arrangements. Uh, you need to communicate with your respective university to finalize anything before you arrive uh, in the United States. Um, next slide. As I have mentioned, um, we have over, you know, 4,000 US higher education U.S. higher accredited institutions, and so you need to research your options. Um, and here, what's great about the Education USA website that the information is actually divided according to the level of study you are interested in. And so here you can see community college, undergraduate, graduate, short term, English language, and online uh, learning. Next slide, please. So um, uh, there are over, you know, 1,700 programs, uh, graduate programs, of course, in the U.S. Um, and, you know, before you apply to any program, to any graduate school, you need to make sure that, you know, the requirements uh, that you need to prepare yourself for so you can actually apply for this specific school. It is also important for you to understand, um, you know, whether this program is a best fit for you or not. And of course, you can learn more about what they offer uh, to international students by checking out their um, official uh, website. Uh, the two, you know, graduate uh, degree programs, you know, offered in the United States are the master's degree and the doctoral um, degree. And of course, they usually, you know, involve um, um, a combination of like research and coursework at the same time. And of course, you know, uh, studying at the graduate level is different than studying at the undergraduate level. Uh, and for example, the master's degree, you know, we have the academic master's, we have the professional master's. So you need to carefully understand the differences between them and choose the best fit uh, program uh, to you. Next slide, please. So the graduate application requirements, um, here, as you can see, you will need to prepare yourself for different um, things. First, the application form and fee. Uh, usually, um, you can find the application form for each institution on its official website. And the application fees, of course, will vary from one university um, to another. Um, the academic records will be required, you know, so you can apply for a graduate program. U.S. universities usually, you know, ask uh, students students, uh, international students, to submit a score um, of an English language proficiency exam, such as the TOEFL IBT or the IELTS or the Duolingo English test. Of course, each institution sets its own um, English language admission score. So you need to check uh, the official website for that specific uh, program and university. Uh, also, you know, some uh, graduate departments, but not all of them, might require, you know, academic admission tests, such as the GRE, the um, graduate record examination, or others like business schools might ask you to submit a score on the GMAT, the graduate management admission um, test. And of course, we have professional um, schools, maybe such as, you know, schools of law, or maybe uh, medicine, dentistry, they will have their own uh, special examinations. Um, of course, you will be asked to submit letters of recommendations as part of your application folder. And basically the people who will write about you in this recommendation letter, they will need to write about your work and assess your potential, um, you know, are you going to do well in graduate school in the US? And you can ask you know, your professors or your employers to write recommendation letters. Of course, you need to check with each program and its specific requir requirements in terms of you know, the numbers of recommendation letters required and who should uh, write them as well. The statement of purpose, another important um, component. Um, you know, almost all graduate programs ask applicants to submit a personal statement as part of the application process. The personal statement, um, you know, gives universities a glimpse of you as an individual, and also, you know, it gives them an insight that is not possible for them to see maybe in the other components of the application, like the test grades, um, the uh, academic records and other things that you share in your application. So you should, you know, uh, work hard on your personal essay because this is an opportunity for you, you know, to discuss to distinguish yourself from other um, applicants. Uh, and basically when you know, the admissions committee or uh, those who will review your application, uh, they want to see if you are a good match uh, for this specific uh, program or 
um, department. Of course, they might ask for other things like a CV or um, resume, or they might ask you to have a certain work experience before you apply uh, to this uh, program. And they will ask you for proof of financial capability so they can learn how uh, you will pay for your study um, uh, uh, costs and expenses. Of course, the earlier that you start preparing yourself for the application requirements, the more time you have to prepare yourself for um, the mentioned uh, requirements. So the website and social media channels for our advising center, Education ESA West Bank, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can also check out our um, YouTube channel where you can uh, watch different um, recordings of previous uh, sessions and also um, videos about different topics related to the application process. And you can contact us uh, through our email, ramallah at educationusa.org. And if we can go to the next slide. Yes, and now I would like to hand it over to Samudra. Uh, she is the chief officer uh, at the Global Outreach, specifically uh, at the University of California D Davis a School of Law. And we are so lucky. This is actually our fourth uh, virtual session with her uh, in a year. So we're so grateful um, to have her. And if you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the chat box if you are joining us from Zoom. If you are watching us on Facebook, please feel free to write your questions in the comments section and we will answer them at the end of the session. Samudra. Um, thank you so much, Marwa and um, Sana. Yeah, just like Marwa said, this is our fourth time during this last, uh, I would say two and a half years. And I'm so blessed to work with them. And they are ambassadors in the field in your countries. So please um, take, uh, advantage of um, the Education USA centers and ask your questions. And they are actually the experts um, in the field. So um, today I'm going to talk about um, how to find the best LLM program for you and also in the US. And I will kind of have three sections to this presentation. So first I will talk about in general, the legal education in the US and then give some tips how to find the best LLM program for you in the US. And then we will kind of move on to talk about optional practical training and curriculum practical training, um, which means how you can uh, get some work experience in the US. And then we'll move on to just talk about little bit specifics about UC Davis um, LLM program, which is like my program. Um, so those are kind of the three sections um, for the presentation. And then uh, you'll have opportunity to ask questions. I'm sorry, Samudra, for the interruption, but can you please just uh, put the presentation on full screen mode? Yeah. The yeah. slideshow, please. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, in the US, when you think about legal education, it may be a little bit different than your own country. Um, in the US, um, after high school, if you wanted to study law or medicine, um, that any professional schools, those are considered prof professional schools, they still have to have an undergraduate degree. So our students, domestic students, they first pursue a four-year degree and then um, they apply for law school. So end of the day, you, uh, the students will have at least um, seven, four plus three. So seven years of education when they graduate from the law school with a JD degree. So that consider the first law degree, Jewish doctor, uh, JD, which um, the four years of undergraduate plus then the law school for three years. And then after that, um, the students take the bar exam and then practice law in the US. Or sometimes um, the, the students wanted to do an LLM or a PhD if they specifically wanted to be, become a professor or do research in an academic institution. So this is kind of to give you like a quick overview of legal education. And um, the master's programs, um, the, the audience for these master's programs in the US, which you have heard LLM, 
um, they are uh, the many students, international lawyers or the law students being uh, after graduated from uh, law school overseas. They are the one who mostly um, uh, participated in the master's program. So many domestic students may choose to uh, practice law right away after JD, um, but the LLM programs, uh, the audience for that mainly are international lawyers. Okay, so um, I just wanted to kind of give you a quick um, uh, kind of overview about the US bar. Um, the, in the US, uh, each state have their own constitution and legal systems. So um, if you wanted to become a lawyer in the US, um, so one of the ways to do that, um, you uh, participate in an LLM program and then your university will help with, you with the bar preparation um, and then advise you, your advisors will advise you how to um, apply for the bar examinations. And um, if you can visit the bar, uh, admission. Um, so if you have more questions, please go to this link, take a picture of this slide, and then kind of learn more about uh, the bar. Uh, but it's uh, each state is have like a own set of rules and regulations. So, um, so if you wanted to becoming a license, um, getting the license to practice in the US, um, so the, the education is a part of it. And then the bar exam, it's given two times a year. And then in addition to bar, you have to do, um, there's a multiple choice test, and then there's a character and fitness pro bono work. So those are kind of the three parts to um, kind of you have to accomplish before you start practicing a lot. And your graduate school, like the LLM program for international lawyers will um, really help um, with this process. Uh, that's why uh, one of the major reasons that um, international lawyers come to US and do a LLM program, hoping after the LLM program, they can sit for the bar. So how to choose a LLM program? So um, there are so many LLM programs or law schools in the US, hundreds of them. So um, that the, these are some kind of the tips that I wanted to give you. So the faculty, faculty is one of the, the key factors. So how you learn about faculty. So this is um, something that you can do your homework. You can go to each um, law schools. I would recommend you choose like five law schools that you want to apply. And then you um, uh, go to their website and learn about the faculty. Just look at who are the professors? What are their background? Are they doing research? Are they doing publishing? Are they attending conferences? Are they reachable? So those are some of the things that you should be thinking about. Also alumni success. Um, are there any alumni from um, your country that graduate from this program? Are there any other alumni? Do they have testimonials, the success stories that you kind of wanted to look at? And also support service for students. This is really, really important that the, are there people helping you with the application process? Other people help with your arrival, orientation, and when you are a student, are they um, helping with, um, do they have a career service that help with uh, employment opportunities? And also reputation. And have you heard of this U U uh, US law school, for example? And ranking, ranking is not the everything, but we also want to kind of keep eye on um, a ranking also. So any, um, uh, are they like top 50 law school in the US, kind of sort of that. Um, so if you go to US News and World Report ranking, you can uh, figure out that, but I just wanted to kind of warn you most of the ranking come from the JD program, not necessarily LLM. So I would just 
keep that just in mind and look at these other factors really carefully when you're looking for LLM program. Or if you're in the audience for looking for other graduate programs like PhDs and masters, it's the same thing. These are the same factors you should be looking for any other graduate programs too. Okay, um, so again, um, the LLMs um, that you can take a general LLM program or you can uh, specialize in a, a certain, like a business law, uh, environment law, or a special area. So um, make sure that the law school you apply in that have that spe special field or most of the um, students come to US for general LLM. So if you have uh, kind of special needs, please um, contact in touch with the law school or the do research that which law schools offer those programs. And also um, there are one year LLM programs and two year LLM programs. So whatever work best for you, that's another thing to consider. At UC Davis um, School of Law, where I work, we do have a one year program and two year program. And also there are law schools starting in August and also in January. Um, you can, if that January work best for you, that's something you should consider. So at UC Davis School of Law, we do have two intakes, August and also January. And um, if you're planning to um, take the bar exam in the US, again, that's another thing for you to look at do this law school help with the bar preparation? That's a good question for you to ask. And also, if you um, wanted to get um, some English preparation, do they have English language programs? So that's another thing for you to uh, consider. And also, there are um, programs um, that offer LLM to JD transfer at UC Davis School of Law, we do offer that option. Um, so that um, also um, our um, LLM students take the, the courses with, um, the courses with uh, JD students. So you can, um, it, it is really helpful and rich environment um, when you're taking courses with LLM and JD you know, students together because it's a win-win situation. JD students are mostly domestic students, so you can learn from them. And also you can provide your background and your knowledge to the JD students. So it's a win-win situation. And also if you want to transfer, if you do really well the LLM program, you can transfer to a JD program and get the JD degree. Um, so that's another option that um, international students are looking for. Um, and also consider um, what are the extra activities um, uh, offered at the law school? Do they have guest lectures, conferences, uh, things like that, clubs? Um, so UC Davis, um, the university, we have more than like hundred of, hundreds of club, clubs. So it's just not the LLM program itself or the graduate program itself. Make sure that you get like a rich in experience while you are a graduate student at a law school or a graduate school. Um, also like some factors, like do you have a friends go to the same school? Do you have a family members? Um, that, that is really important that if you have um, support from those family members or friends, when you like leave your country and travel like thousands and thousands of miles away. So think about those factors too. And also the student life, how, where are you going to live on campus, on off campus, how expensive sometimes that um, the people don't realize that law school may be like the tuition may be different from each law school, um, they, but they don't, uh, the students don't realize how expensive sometimes like in living in Los Angeles or New York City or something like that, even though law, law school may be a little cheaper. So all, all those factors you have to think about, I would recommend you just kind of 
um, write down a budget for yourself. And also, do you like to live in a big city or small city? Again, think about the financial factor with those things. And also whether if, if you are in US, um, some states that we have a mild winter, but some states, um, the Midwest North that have a very um, heavy um, winter season. So you, those are the things um, you should be thinking about. And um, the cost and um, how to finance yourself. So um, what, what is the, the budget for the tuition? What you can afford? That's really, um, uh, when I told you earlier, try to figure out about five law schools that you want to apply. I would recommend that you consider five law schools kind of within your budget. And um, also, are there any funding from your Home country or a university, um, kind of explore those um, items and also um, talk to Education USA. They may know that any funding opportunities um, connected to the State Department or to the US Embassy. And um, also at UC Davis School of Law, we do offer scholarships. We don't unfortunately have full scholarships, so I just want to really make sure that but we do have partial scholarships. So, um, so our tuition, um, you can look at if you go to web, our website. And then um, that if you think that um, that's affordable for you, um, we don't have an application fee. So you can apply and see which kind of a scholarship you will be offered. But again, it's going to be a partial scholarship. And this is another resource that you can look LSAC um, that when you're applying for law schools, this is one of the places that um, you can apply through LSAC or at UC Davis School of Law, you can directly apply with us with no cost. If you go, this is a great website and great resources, but when you apply through this LSAC, you have to pay an application fee. So, uh, but in, in my art uh, situation, you can apply directly with uh, us with um, not paying any application fee. Um, so I also wanted to give this additional resources, LLM guide, and um, that uh, these are some of the things that you should keep eye on when you're doing your process of research um, a law schools. And I just kind of want to talk about a little bit about what happened after you finish your graduate degree. So in the US, and people ask this question all the time, is that possible to work in the US? So there's two ways that you can work in the US, like as an F1 student, which is a student under student visa. So in um, like just um, LLM as an um, example, so after you finish your um, LLM program, which is the graduate master's degree in law, um, that you're eligible to apply for a one year of OPT, which is optional practical training. This is optional if you wanted to, uh, after you study, after your graduation, if you wanted to go back to your home country, that's totally fine. If you have a job waiting for you, that's okay. We have students do that. But some students wanted to get like a, like a, some job experience in the US. Um, so they um, are eligible after the LLM program, but it's um, they have to apply for this uh, temporary employment authorization. And um, this is something we recommend um, about 90 days before, like about um, three months before um, that, um, uh, you can work with the immigration officer at your school and then they will help you with all the paperwork. So three months before your end of your program, you apply and then when you graduate, you will have this employment card. And then with this card, you can work off campus, something related to your major. So if you study law, um, you can do a law internship, you can um, 
um, be a, like a junior clerk. Um, so it's uh, there are several jobs. And at that time, um, in our case, our career service um, will have job opportunities and uh, internship opp opportunities. They will help with your resume and things like that. Um, and then student will be eligible to work for one year and then kind of earn some money, recoup some of the money that they spend for the um, LLM program. Um, so that's one option. And um, also there's something called curriculum practical uh, training. So this is um, off-campus job that you could do um, paid or unpaid. And, uh, but you have to be a full-time student, most cases, nine months before you apply. So if you do a one-year LLM program, this may not make sense. But um, if you are part of the two-year LLM program that, or like if you plan to do like a graduate degree in chemistry, for example, if it is three-year program, like after first year, year two and year three, like during summer, which you don't have to take courses, you can do a full-time CPD. That means working off campus full-time, something related to your major. So our law students, if you are in a part of like two-year program that uh, for between first year and second year that summer, you can apply to get this CPD from uh, your immigration office um, on campus. So this is something that um, you can, after you enroll, and then you can get some advice while you like maybe the first term or something that to get like plan ahead. So those are the kind of the two types of employment opportunities. And also as a graduate student or F1 student, um, on campus, you can work up to 20 hours. And that's something for law, it's kind of hard because it's a very rigorous curriculum, but we do have students eligible to work um, 20 hours a week on campus. But CPD and OPD are these are off-campus options. So um, just move on to like the last section of my presentation. Just kind of wanted to show you where we at um, UC Davis School of Law. Uh, we are one of the top 10 public university. Um, and then we have about 36,000 students and about 500 law students. And we are located in beautiful California, close to San Francisco, Napa Valley and Lake Tahoe, beautiful, beautiful part of the US. And these are some um, kind of pictures. Uh, we have Mediterranean climate. And also um, we are a small town and very close to Sacramento and San Francisco big towns, but we are like, a college town. That means most students, we do have everybody pretty much live in this town, some way or other connected to the university. Um, and highly educated population, nice weather. See, these are some pictures. And we, these are some of the rankings um, that we are proud of, our law school. And also we do have a general LLM program. Also you can customize. We do have a one-year program, two-year program. We do have a spring start and a um, fall start LLM program. And we do take um, applications year round. So if you apply like today, we will have a decision for you if the application is complete in like two weeks from now. That's kind of the process. Um, and bar preparation, we do have an excellent bar preparation program. And these are some of the areas, if you wanted to concentrate, these are some of the areas available. Business law, criminal law, environment, healthcare law, human rights, intellectual property, international law. Um, so these are some, some areas that you could go. Um, and then um, we do have, um, that you get to take courses with um, JD students, and then we have outstanding library and um, scholarship opportunities, just like we talked about earlier. Um, so these are some highlights. And also we do have different centers that if you wanted to pursue like some research with the faculty, these are some of the law centers that are available. 
and we are very close to Sacramento, which is like uh, the capital of California. So uh, our students um, visit the capital and also if you wanted to do an internship or a, um, a, any um, like an opportunity, you can, uh, our career service always have uh, opportunities with the capital. Uh, and we do have uh, student organizations and things like that. Uh, and also we do have a summer programs uh, right now, like we accepting applications. Um, there's a legal, English for legal professional program and also orientation in USA law. So these are um, not um, uh, the whole one year or two year LLM program. These are like two weeks to four week um, short term program that um, we have students from all over the world come to Davis and uh, during summer. And these are some pictures just kind of wanted to show you what our university look like. Yeah, so, and I'm happy to share um, my email address. You can directly contact with me. And these are social media you can follow. And I see some questions in the chat box. So let me go over. Um, So somebody was asking, uh, what is the difference between one year and two year LLM program? Good question. So the one year program that it's kind of the core curriculum, and then you finish that, you get your degree. So that's kind of the cheapest option. But um, the students may have, um, so the number one thing, International students, when they, when they come to US, they may want to spend not just one year, they maybe want to study for two years because they have, they came all the way. So some students choose to do two years, that case. And also two year program obviously costs more, it's twice more. So the students maybe have that kind of a money and they're able to afford the two year program. Most importantly, it's about academic goals. So they may want to do it like a general LLM, all the courses first year, which help them to bar preparation and things like that. But the second year, they while they're preparing for the bar, they may want to be specialized. So they may take extra courses. So the difference between one year and two year, the student with a two-year program graduate with obviously like more courses, more coursework, and maybe more um, different specialized um, areas. And then there's the question, do you have virtual session or meetings with international students who are currently enrolled? Yes, we do have actually, in fact, we do have a, I can send you Mara. I'm, I'm doing a session with a, one of our current students from Nepal in next week. So, um, I think it's April 5th, but I'm happy to share that. So Education USA Kathmandu, Nepal hosting us. So I'm doing a joint presentation with the student from Nepal. So he will be sharing his um, current experience. So I'm happy to share that um, information. Yes, Samudra, if you can share with us um, the information after the session and we can definitely uh, share it with our participants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, when should I begin applying for a LLM program? Um, yes, so you can apply now. So we are taking applications right now for August 2022. So this year, August starting program and January 2023, we are taking applications right now. So when I say applications right now, as long as you have your um, complete application and we have no application fee, you can scan all the documents to me and uh, then we can, uh, you will know within a couple of weeks um, your status, whether you got accepted and how much scholarship money you will be getting. Um, so the, the, it's a rolling application. Um, so we recommend that for August, we, you apply right now. So since if you uh, needed a visa and things like that, um, but um, when it's getting closer, we can take the application till about June, but um, you may not have time to um, get a visa at that point. 
Um, do I need to have a license to practice law in my country to apply for your uh, law program? So if you have a law degree, like an LLB, you could apply for the LLM program. And then if you wanted to sit for the bar at that fine point, which state or whatever, depending on, you have to contact the bar and figure out what you would need exactly. But to take our program, you needed to have a, like a law degree. Um, so pre summer pre law program. So we have two: the orientation uh, to USA law, which kind of give a summary of how, how the legal system work in the US. The other one, it's a legal English program, which you will learn about legal, like how to write legal research and writing. Mostly, it's focus on um, writing. So, uh, and those, if you go to our website, you can see the pricing and the dates, exact dates. Um, okay, so the review, how the application review, uh, we are doing a holistic process. That means not just your grades, we look at your uh, work experience. If you're a recent graduate, we look at if you have involved. Um, any activities while you're in your law school. Um, again, don't uh, self-select um, and say, oh, I don't, I don't have uh, internships, so I, I'm not qualified, or I don't have job experience, um, that I'm not going to be selected. Um, so most important thing, we are trying to find a, a cohort of students that come from different backgrounds. So that means uh, when I say background, some students may have a work experience practicing lawyer like uh, experience um, for like 10 years or some students may have nothing, uh, no experience right after grad. Uh, so, but those both students are we consider important to us because those both backgrounds help uh, to reach our conversations in, in the classroom. So don't self-select that certain criteria. You can, it's a simple process. You can send all the documents to me and um, what you have. And um, it's important to write a personal statement, which is like that, why you want to do an LLM program and tell the committee that why you want to pursue. That's a really important part um, that uh, admission committee like to see. So your CV, your personal statement, recommendation letters, and then um, if you have uh, done like your TOEFL or IELTS um, scores, so those are kind of the requirements. And the, we also look at your academics, uh, but it's not just we are looking at your academics, we look at everything. Um, are there scholarships that cover it? Um, just like I said before, we don't have any full scholarships um, at all. So, but we do have uh, some generous partial scholarships. Do you wait list applicants? Um, since we are doing uh, rolling applications, we don't usually wait list applications. Do you require a score on LSAT? No, we don't require. Yeah, those are the questions. And thank you so much, uh, Maru and Sana for hosting me. And thank you so much, um, the audience and taking time this evening from your time um, that joining me today. And uh, I will put my email address. If you have any questions, you can directly contact me. That's thank great. You. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Samudra, for sharing so many information opportunities that our um, uh, audience can uh, benefit from. Uh, and thank you to those who ask questions. And please feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions or need any explanation or any of the links that um, Samudra have mentioned today. And if you have any questions, you know, specifically about the law program um, at UC Davis, please feel free to reach out to her as well. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Samudra, again. Goodbye, Good everyone. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Goodbye.